Hey guys, hope you're all doing very well. Wave 618 here with a much needed update on Bitcoin. It's been, I think it's been about three months since the last video. So a lot has been going on, basically had another child, moved house, then it was Christmas, then we had New Year's. So it's been all go, but now a little bit of free time has allowed me to do this video. Obviously, those of you that are signed up to my weekly videos over on my website, wave618.com, will be fully aware of what I've been looking out for on this chart and the significance of this line, which we're going to go into in a lot more detail in today's video. But the key question that we want to discuss is, obviously, we, we seem to be seeing a, a pretty aggressive move to the upside. And as I will demonstrate here, it's a shift in momentum of this downward trend. Okay, so the big question is, are we now going into a new bull market ready to, you know, take out the highs and make new all time highs? That is the biggest question on everyone's mind. Now, I'm going to highlight in this video that obviously that is always a possibility. This is technical analysis and no, you can't know for sure what exactly is going to happen. It's a balance of probabilities, but I'm going to show you why I do have a bit of caution about us going all of a sudden into a new bull market okay there's a lot of hefty overhead resistance that i want to discuss so i'll go into that in detail i'll justify it it's not just a case of you know fear mongering here there's nothing really to gain from that but as i say it's all about just telling you what i see within the charts now for those of you that have been following the channel for a while you'll know i like elliott wave to uh, evaluate the sentiment within the chart pitchforks are a huge element of my analysis for monitoring the trend and then for horizontal levels I generally use, well, there's Fibonacci levels, which I essentially affiliate to um, to Elliott Wave. Then you've got your psychological levels, your round numbers, um, you've got your order blocks, but very importantly, your Camarilla pivots, which I don't think people give enough uh, weight towards. And you, I'll show you how that is giving us some very key information that we can look out for uh, in determining how high price can go here, okay? So these are the things we're going to discuss. But first of all, let's just discuss this pitchfork holding the price actually to the, down, to the downside. We can see how well price has just been rebounding off these lines. So it's a very clear and obvious pitchfork. It's actually the modified shift pitchfork. As you can see, first pivot, second and third. From there, we obviously plummeted down to our lower median line. We bounced as high as <coughs> excuse me, the median line. And then we've come all the way down to the lower warning line. Again, revisiting the median line. And then we gravitate between the median line and the lower median line for a while. And now we're actually shifting momentum a little bit above the median line. And it's done it rather emphatically. You can see the aggressiveness in this move. Okay. So I tweeted just the other day about looking out for this. I mentioned that it was a really, really significant move, especially if we take out this short term overhead resistance in and around this point here. You can see price was bouncing off of this level. For quite a while and we've broken through that cleanly also okay so no regard for that overhead resistance at all it's absolutely plowed through it okay now from an elliott wave point of view there's lots of ways you can look at it from an elliott wave point of view but ultimately i'm looking at that as a three-way move down okay so i mean whether you want to label it a b c so a b c let's take magnet mode off so these labels appear correctly so yeah b up there a down here and C down here, something like that. You can call it A, B, C or W, X, Y. It doesn't really matter. Point is, I'm looking at the the, the, the bearish possibility is a big W, X, Y playing out. Okay, so there's this A, B, C would be a W. Then we'd need to be working on an X wave, which I'll explain could come up as high as this point here. And then an ultimate Y wave, which we'll go into details on targets to the downside for that one later. But for now, we want to focus on this bit here, okay? There's a lot of people that will be very bullish on Bitcoin saying it's going to go to new all-time highs from here. Why? Because we've seen a shift in momentum, an aggressive move, and it's on the back of a 75% retracement. So from our all-time high, let's just uh, look at the percentage drawdown. We have literally come down, all right, it's even more than 75, it's around 77%, okay? It's a huge retracement, okay? So we've got a massive retracement, and then we've gone up pretty emphatically, showing a clear desire to attack the downward trend, okay? So I fully, under I fully understand and appreciate everyone potentially calling for new all-time highs. I get it, I get it. But 
you've got to be cautious and look at the bigger picture. We're still a, a, way, a long way away from confirming a break of the downward trend. First of all, the downward trend is held very nicely, as I say, by this downward pitch rock. Okay. Now, the price action to the downside came as far as the lower warning line, which basically means in order to confirm that this downward trend is 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 finished, you need to take out your upper warning line. And even in doing that, it could still be an X wave. Yeah, all it means is the W wave is finished. Okay, by breaking the upper warning line. Okay, so I won't go into that in too much detail. But basically, we're still as you can see, <coughs> very much within this downward pitchfork still. Okay, so this really just highlights the importance of not getting too overexcited at this moment. Okay, next thing to consider is again, focusing on it from an Elliott wave point of view. After this three waves down, what do we get? Well, we have a corrective move, very corrective as you can see, and then another corrective move. No doubt about it, this is a three leg move down, okay? So it's a little bit unusual for a terminal leg down to be just three waves, okay? So that's another reason why I'm actually looking at this as a, a corrective move. So I'm looking at this as an A, B, C expanded flat. Okay, so when you see a three wavish move in one direction, followed by an aggressive, impulsive looking move following it, always be aware of the possibility of a C wave. Okay, they catch people out again and again. I've spoken about this many times since I've set up this YouTube channel. They catch people out again and again. They look impulsive, but the last leg of a flat is often like that. Okay. So it catches people out because a flat is a corrective pattern overall, but the final leg looks like it's taking you, you know, in the upward direction when in fact you're just completing a bigger corrective sequence. So I'm looking at it, of course it could be a running flat in which case it might have finished already, but I'm of the opinion that we do have further upside, which I'll explain in a moment when we take a look at the Ethereum chart. Okay. So for that reason, I think we have more upside potential taking out the top of the uh, this A wave here. And so I'm looking at the expanded flat scenario, which would be a correction, correction, impulse. So at three, three, five to make an expanding flat. And I'll talk about why this kind of region. So this is at 29K. I'll talk a bit more about resistance levels in a moment. But for now, just focusing on the Elliott Wave aspect. So as I say, looking at when you get this three-way move down, then you get an aggressive move. Always be conscious of the possibility of an expanded flat. Of course, we could, if we start taking out 29K and pushing higher, we would then need to reevaluate and maybe start calling this an impulse. One, two, three, four, five, etc. Going to the upside, creating a new bull market once again, going to new all-time highs. But until we break bear trend parameters, there's really no need to start getting too excited. There's still the potential to long this market into resistance. And then if we take out resistance, then look to get back in. Okay, that's the, always the way I look to play it. You've got to take your profits where you, where you come into resistance. Otherwise, ultimately, you will blow your account eventually. Yeah, you've got to take profits in this game. So... Yeah, so that, that's the kind of scenario I'm looking at right now. So I'm looking at for uh, this kind of expanded flat scenario, okay? So let's just talk about, now we can just talk about the horizontal levels of resistance that we can look out for, okay? So first of all, there's the upper median line, which we could argue could offer a bit of resistance. But as I say, when we look at Ethereum in a moment, Ethereum definitely has a lot more room to the upside. And so I think Bitcoin is going to plow through this upper median line also. In which case, the next level of resistance is the upper warning line. And already you're starting to get your confluence in, into this overhead resistance point. We consolidated around this point again here. And we're getting that confluence point, which it seems to be giving a bit of a crossover around here where you'd expect an impulse to kind of project into. So that comes into around the 29K mark. Okay. Now, very importantly, I want to now pull up Camarilla pivots. They are absolutely huge and not talked about enough. I want to go on the weekly time frame. We can take off everything else and just leave on the Camarilla pivots for a moment. Just to demonstrate their effectiveness, I'm just going to show you over the last five years, so back to 2018, how powerful they have been. So 2018, where did we come down to? The S4. Okay, so S stands for support, R stands for resistance. So into support and subsequently for 2019, we plowed higher. Where did we find resistance? We found resistance at the R4, struggled around here, and finished the year just shy of the R3, so just beneath the R3. Subsequently, 
Going into 2020, how high did we go? We went to the R3. Because we had a poor finish to 2019, this R3, there was always a good shout for it acting as resistance. And what happened? We absolutely plowed down into the next key level of support, which is our S3. From there, clear bull trend, as we all know, we all remember it very vividly. Absolutely dominant trend right there, okay, for the year of 2020. And 2021 very much went sideways and ultimately managed to put in an all-time high, as we know, at around 69K, okay? But since then, we've come down. Uh, 2020, sorry, 2022, it was actually the opening, the year open that acted as resistance. We managed to come up here into the year open and then we plowed down. And as you can see, I was looking out to see if we would use the S3 as support, which we did initially. Then you look for the S4 as support, clearly wasn't. We used it as resistance, finished the year beneath. So what happens now, going into 2023, because we finished this year so poorly, you would look for R3 and R4 potentially acting as resistance levels, okay? So as I say, there are reasons for why this is all just a corrective move to the upside, as I've explained from the expanded ABC. So resistance levels, you got one here at 20, we can call it 25 and a half K, all right? As I've already showed that I think we're gonna push through that level. And you don't have to hit these levels to the T, you can get wicks that push through them, don't forget. But I just wanna show you where these levels lie. So R4 is at 35K. Now that seems <clears throat> maybe a little bit steep, but if you look left, interestingly, you do get some very key lows around this point. We consolidate around this point many times here and here. So it's a very important level. If we do end up pushing through 29K, or at least this R3 at 25.5K, that's a level to watch. It's a take profit level. Okay, I would not want to sit on a long position going into that level at all. Okay, if it takes it out and uses it as support, fair enough, excellent. Look for further longs, but it's a take profit level if you're going into it from a from the underside. Okay, so I wanted to throw out these levels. Now, interestingly, S3 is all the way down here at 7k. I'm not too sure that if we do push into either of these levels, we're going to test this level this year. Okay, it might drag on into 2024, the ultimate low. Okay, because obviously it's not going to come down just crashing. It's going to come down at this kind of trajectory. Uh, I think it'll push its way into 2024. Most likely, it might tap the end of this level at 2023, possibly too early to tell, way too early to tell. But this is what I'm seeing from the Camarilla pivot. So just with this in mind, keep an eye out for 25.5K and 35K. All right, so in and around those levels, and just remember, we don't have to hit them to the T, but ultimately, they're very likely to hold as key high time frame resistance, uh, especially looking at the weekly candle closes or your monthly candle closes. Okay, so now coming back to our daily time frame, bringing back our annotations. So key things to look out for. Let's take off these Camarilla pivots. So as I say, I think with the expanded scenario, we take out this high. There's a huge amount of confluence here. So we've got the R3 at 25 and a half K, which is round here. Yeah, that is a kind of double top with the A wave here. I think we push through it. So I think we get at least a wick up here, but I think that R3 ultimately is going to act as resistance. So 25 and a half K, I think we, we, I don't think we're going to spend that long above it. And the longer we spend above it, the more that will be invalidated. And certainly I would start be thinking, I'll be starting to think about a move into 35 K. All right. But I've got a feeling we're going to see a sharp wick into 29K and then take us right back beneath that 25K mark. That's how I think it will play out because 25K is a key high time frame level of resistance. Okay. The next very important thing to discuss is our 200 week simple moving average, which I know it was everyone was talking about it previously and now all of a sudden it's kind of gone off the radar, but it's a very important level. So looking back, support here, support here, support here. And then all of a sudden it flipped to resistance. And this is where I certainly was talking about how we can expect further downside because this was just a three wavish move into resistance and then we've come down again. Um, but yeah, this would again, again, come in around that 25K mark where it's like a double top with the A wave. We've got the R3 Camarilla pivot on the weekly time frame. Um, so I would be very, very cautious about holding onto a long position after hitting the two, once hitting the 200 week simple moving average because we could there is the possibility we just get pinned straight back down from there okay as i say looking at it from a 
Elliott Wave point of view, I think there's a shout for a move into 29k, but I probably would be a little bit worried about that trade between 25.5k to 29k just because of this the 200 week simple moving average and the weekly camera, R3 Camarilla pivot. Okay, so always keep an eye out for this line, very, very important. Okay. And of course, if we can break through this level, certainly there's then a run into the next level of resistance at 35K. That's our weekly R4 Camarilla pivot. Okay, so they're the key things to look out for. Now, I did mention I want to discuss Ethereum also because Ethereum is a very interesting chart. Also, it's always important to look at correlating charts uh, when it, you don't feel like you're getting all of the information from one chart. So let's pull up Ethereum. So Ethereum is as such. And again, as you can see, the very important pitchfork again it's a modified shift pitchfork using the first second and third pivots as we demonstrated on bitcoin and here once more we're breaking what has been a very useful median line okay now here on ethereum it's, it's pretty obvious to see anyone who follows elliott wave can see there's your first leg up there's your second it's gonna have it's gonna be very ugly and irregular looking to suddenly collapse from here very strange looking if that was the case I'm expecting this to be a kind of zigzag play out, at least taking out that high. And that's why I think Bitcoin is going to push not just beyond the previous high, but a bit, you know, quite significantly above it. As I say, could go up to 29K on Bitcoin. Ethereum, again, you're looking at this kind of region uh, where you've got your overhead resistance at 2200. But you could, I just wanted to pull up this chart because here it demonstrates quite clearly it's, it's, there's a strong likelihood of a, an aggressive move up yet to come and i think we're going to see the same kind of play out on bitcoin so it's an exciting time we're probably going to see a good push to the upside but the key message from this video is to be cautious i'm not overly convinced that it's us going into a new bull market okay although i expect an aggressive move potentially over the next two or three weeks i would still air caution until we take out key resistance levels okay uh, and another reason for caution really is the stock market indices, of course, you know that they generally represent the general market sentiment. And if we just pull up the Nasdaq, I want to show you here. I'm not going to go into too much detail because the video will be dragging on a little bit. But since our key low here, that move up is very clearly corrective. So it's waiting for another leg down. We're waiting to take out that low. Now I know we've bounced up pretty high, but it could it be a correction, correction, correction? something like that, a long drawn out move up, or we're just going to go up and then roll over as such. Hard to say, but the point is, three wavish move up, you would expect it to come down and take out this low pretty soon. Admittedly, the Dow Jones is showing a very different picture, a lot of strength being highlighted here on the Dow. Uh, could certainly squeeze out an all-time high, would not be too surprised by that, but we've got this very key rectangle here which is our order block we can demonstrate how that was drawn on the monthly time frame so monthly order block so very very significant series of red candles green candle here marked out the top or sorry the open and close of that candle and then if you go on the daily you'll see how well this level or this rectangle has represented resistance so we called it to the t in the weekly update group that we have uh, where it got rejected off of this point. Now we're revisiting it and it'll be interesting to see if we can break above because if it does, there's a good shout for a new all-time high on the Dow Jones. So very interesting to see how price reacts here at 34,683 here on Dow Jones. All right, so that pretty much summarizes everything that I want to say on Bitcoin. Hopefully that has been of use. Sorry, the videos haven't been as frequent. I will try and do some. I can't guarantee they're going to be as frequent as they once were. But uh, if you are interested, as I say, I do my weekly updates every single Thursday um, where you can find that on my channel, or sorry, my website, wave618.com. Uh, I price it very affordably, like 50 quid a week, uh, sorry, 50 pound a month rather. And um, yeah, but uh, for those of you who have your reservations and want to see what it's like, I can do a 50% discount, which I will post a link to in the comments of this YouTube video, but also on Twitter. I'll put it in the tweet that I post this video on also. So if you're interested, you're always welcome, where we cover at least Bitcoin, Ethereum and Nasdaq every single week uh, to see how these markets are progressing in real time. And uh, yeah, until then, let's see how this plays out. All right, guys, take care.